Welcome back to scene in 15. Please like and subscribe so I can cure my agoraphobia and finally leave my mother's house. The film starts with Barry Egan in a blue suit sitting in the corner of a blue room calling a helpline about some coupons. He hears a sound and hangs up to go investigate. He goes outside to find that the gate outside is open. Then a red checkered cab hastily drops off a small classic piano and drives off. Later that morning, a white hatchback drives into a parking lot and a lady in red asks him if she can leave her car with him as the mechanic doesn't open until 8. He is hesitant to help her as he doesn't know them very well, but then agrees. She thanks him and leaves. He awaits for her to go around the corner and then quickly slips back into his warehouse, looking very paranoid. He then brings the piano into his office and plays a few notes. Then, his colleague, Lance, arrives to work, asks Barry if he's okay and why he's wearing a suit. Barry replies that he just bought one and thought it would be nice to wear it to work. Barry then shows him the piano and he asks why it's here, to which Barry says he doesn't know. He just found it on the street. During a meeting with some customers, Barry receives a call from his sister, Rhonda, asking if he's going to the party this evening. He replies yes, and she hangs up. He returns to the meeting, but then gets another call from one of his other sisters, also reminding him about the party. She mocks him and calls him a phony before hanging up. Again, he resumes his meeting and introduces his new plunger named Fungers, which apparently has unbreakable handles. He demonstrates this by smashing it against the table. He apologizes. He gets another call from one of his sisters on line 4. His customer asks him how many sisters he has. He replies, I have seven. On the phone, his sister Kathleen asks him if he's going to the party and makes sure he knows that she is serious. During his lunch break, Barry goes over to one of the mechanics and asks about the lady's car from earlier. The mechanic tells him it's fine. Back in the office, another one of the sisters, Elizabeth, comes to visit him. She tells him she wants to introduce him to one of her friends from school by inviting her to the party tonight. Barry doesn't like the sound of that idea, as he would be tense and not be himself. He then tells her he might not even go. Later that evening, as he arrives at the party, he can hear his sisters telling embarrassing stories about him. He comes into the kitchen where they greet him and remind him how they used to call him gay boy. He enters the living room and greets his brother-in-law. He then asks Elizabeth if her friend is here, and she tells him she couldn't make it. He then stands by himself awkwardly as his sisters gossip in the background about him. He then freaks out and smashes three windows and his sisters scream at him. Barry talks in private to one of his brother-in-laws, saying that he doesn't like himself and if he can help him because he's a doctor. He replies that he's a dentist and asks what kind of help he thinks he can give him. His brother-in-law suggests a psychiatrist and asks him exactly what the problem is. Barry is not sure, as he doesn't know how other people are, but he just needs someone to talk to. He admits that he cries a lot for no reason, and then proceeds to cry and stumbles away. Next, at the supermarket, Barry finds a box of teriyaki chicken with an offer for frequent flyer miles. He continues wandering around the supermarket while talking to himself, until he finds the offer on some pudding. Back at home, Barry is cutting out his coupons when he notices an ad for a phone sex line. He calls the number, and the receptionist for the service on the line asks him for his credit card details. He confirms with her that it's confidential, and she replies, of course. He gives his details, including his address and social security number. He says he doesn't want the girl to know his name, and to call him Jack. She assures him that's no problem, and tells him a girl will call him right back. He waits for a while, then his phone rings. A woman with a sensual voice says she is calling for Jack. She tells him that her name is Georgia and tries to talk dirty, but Barry seems to just want to have a chat. She describes her body and asks him if he's masturbating. Barry tells her he is not. She asks if he has a girlfriend, and he lies that he does. She keeps trying to keep things hot, but they end up talking about his work. Eventually, she asks again about his penis and suggests he should take off his clothes. He plays with his willy and then goes to bed. In the morning just before Barry heads out the door for work, Georgia calls him and asks if she can borrow $750 for rent. He says he can't afford it and apologizes. 
She says maybe she can call back and ask his girlfriend, and reminds him she has all his details. Barry says no thank you, and hangs up. At work, we see Lance, who is now also wearing a suit. He asks Barry what's up with all the puddings. Barry tells him he's collecting air miles from the promotion. Lance asks if he is going on a trip. Barry says no. He then calls his bank to report a problem, saying he's worried that someone might be using it and renews his card. Moments later, Elizabeth arrives with the lady who brought her car to the mechanic. Elizabeth asks Barry why he's wearing a suit again. He says he doesn't know and greets them. His sister then introduces her friend as Lena, a good friend from work. She tells him that Lena has come to collect her car and invites him to come to have breakfast together. He says he can't as he has to work and apologizes. Lena says it's no problem. His sister asks him about the piano and all the pudding, but before he gets the answer, he gets a call online too. It's Georgia. She asks him to up his credit card limit and threatens him again by saying she will call his girlfriend. He tells her he has no girlfriend and that he will call the police. She doesn't believe him. Elizabeth is embarrassed and apologizes to Lena, who says it's no problem and goes to collect her car. Elizabeth storms into Barry's office and gets up in his face while he's still being threatened on the phone. He finally hangs up on the very angry Georgia. Elizabeth starts questioning him on what he thinks about Lena and if he's going to ask her out. He tells her he doesn't usually ask people out. She then asks him if he asked Walter for a shrink. He denies it. Lena returns, and Elizabeth hurries outside. Lena takes the opportunity to talk to Barry, saying it must be nice to have a big family because she has the opposite. A forklift truck crashes outside of Barry's office, which shocks Lena, but Barry doesn't even turn to look. They continue with some small talk about work, and she tells him she's going to Hawaii on a business trip on Friday. Barry says he was thinking about going there too, on business, but he's probably not going to go because of the thing he's got going on. Elizabeth comes back, and Lena leaves with her saying that Barry is probably too busy for a girlfriend. They split up to go to their cars. Lena stops at her car, thinks for a moment, and heads back over to Barry and asks him out for dinner, and she gives him her address and phone number. They say bye. Lena leaves, then Georgia calls again, telling Barry he's just started a war he can't afford. Meanwhile in Utah, a man, Dean, asks Georgia about Barry. He says he will bring the brothers on this mission. Georgia and the three men gather in Dean's office. Dean tells them they will get $100 for two days work, and tells him to hit him at his house. Next, Lena and Barry are at dinner. She confesses that she wanted to meet him after she saw a picture of him. That's why she dropped her car off at his office the other day. She asks him about the pudding, and he discreetly tells her how he can get enough frequent flyer miles for the rest of his life from the promotion on the pudding. She mentions that his sister told embarrassing stories about him. Barry excuses himself to the bathroom and has a fit of rage, destroying some cubicle doors. He returns to the table, but the manager asks him to talk to him in private. The manager confronts him about the bathroom, but Barry denies it. Lena and Barry are asked to leave. They end up back at Lena's apartment, where Barry decides he should go, kisses her on the cheek, and heads downstairs. He is stopped by the receptionist, who says he has a call. It's Lena telling him she wanted to kiss him just now. So Barry heads back up, gives her a kiss, and wishes her a safe trip. Back at home, Barry is throwing out the trash when suddenly he is kidnapped. He gets out $500 for them and explains it's a lot of money for him. One of the brothers attacks him and he runs away whimpering and screaming. He keeps running for a surprisingly long time, but the brothers catch up to him in their truck and ask him why he's running, when they know where he lives. Back at work the next day, Barry tells Lance he made some calls and he got in trouble. Lance is confused. Barry stares at his huge stack of pudding thinking he should get more. He then gets a phone call from Rhonda about smashing her windows last week. He hangs up immediately and starts to tell Lance that he's going to Hawaii next week and asks him to come to get more pudding with him. At the supermarket, he explains the Air Miles promotion and buys all the puddings. Back at the office, he has a breakdown when he finds out from the pudding company that it takes six to eight weeks to process the air miles. 
He decides to leave right away, tells Lance he's in charge. Barry takes a plane to Hawaii with no luggage, just wearing his suit. After he arrives, he gets a taxi downtown and calls Elizabeth to get Lena's number. She gives him a hard time and he loses it, semi joking that he will kill her if she doesn't give him the number. He calls Lena's room at the Sheraton Hotel. A man answers, tells him he has the wrong room, and hangs up. He tries again. Finally, Lena answers, and she is ecstatic that he's in the Hawaii. Barry goes to the hotel to meet Lena. They kiss for a long time in the lobby. After dinner, they head back to her room. They kiss in bed, and Lena tells Barry she wants to bite his cheeks because he's adorable. He replies that he wants to smash her face and squeeze it because it's so pretty. Later on, Elizabeth calls Lena, asking if her brother contacted her. She lies and says he hasn't. She then asks Barry where he has to go for business. He confesses he has no business there, that he came here for her. Barry then calls the sex line from a payphone and leaves a message asking for his money back and informs them he will be home shortly. While they're traveling back, Lena asks Barry if she can go home with him. He says he thought she was going to anyway. As they pull into Barry's driveway, a truck hits the tail end of their car. Barry turns to look at Lena, whose head starts bleeding. Barry exits the vehicle, buttons up his jacket like a true G, and unleashes his pent-up fury on the crew. He returns to the car where Lena is in shock. Barry tells her it's okay and takes Lena to the hospital. While she is getting treated, he sneaks off angrily and calls the sex line again while pacing around. Georgia answers, pretending she doesn't know him, and ends up transferring the call to the man who sent them. Dean denies everything, saying he runs a legitimate business. They start having a screaming match, asking for each other's names. Dean says shut, 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 shut up 11 times. Barry tells him to F himself. Dean tells him he's dead and hangs up. Barry runs out of the building while still holding the phone to his head. He arrives back at the hospital to find Lena has already left. Barry then finds the listing for Dean's mattress business in Utah, which was sent to his invoice for the anonymous calls. Barry goes to the mattress store where Dean is getting his hair cut by Georgia. He stands in the doorway while they stare at each other. Dean calls him some names and Barry tells him to say that's that and to end it before he beats the hell out of him. They square up inches from each other's face while Barry explains he has the strength that Dean can't imagine because he has a love in his life. Dean is impressed and a little intimidated by Barry after finding out he came all the way from LA and that he didn't call the cops, so he agrees that's that. Barry rushes back into his office where Lance is worried about him. Barry explains he was in Utah and is fine. Then he runs out with a piano and brings it all the way to Lena's apartment. She isn't very happy with him. He starts to explain how he called a phone sex line, which confuses Lena at first, but then clarifies that he did a bunch of stuff to make sure she isn't hurt again. Lena is silent, but then smiles and embraces him and forgives him with a kiss. Finally, we see Lena standing over Barry playing the piano. She holds him and says, so here we go. Scene. Now you've seen it, and remember kids, if somebody hits your girl, don't just run away.